Right, all right, all right. And we are back with the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, giving all you the cool, all the cool stuff from professional wrestling, AEW, TNA, Major League Wrestling, uh, AEW, also, you know, New Japan Professional Wrestling, Ring of Honor. I try my best to dabble on every wrestling promotion that's happening, obviously, in the professional wrestling industry, all the headlines and all the breaking news and stuff like that. So let's dig on into our last and final segment of Tuesday's show, our Tuesdays Today in Wrestling History. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's do this. All right. Back in 2000, I took the DeLorean back in 2001. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not going to do all that. But uh, 2001, WWF Monday Night Raw uh, at Tacoma Dome featured the first ever WCW match on WWF television. And um, you can just say it was the worst match, the most embarrassing match in WWE history. Um Booker T defended his WCW championship against Buff Bagwell. Even, uh, you know, even WWE.com in 2013 named it the most awkward match in the, you know, in the history of the of the company, which kind of sucks. Even the crowd was chanting, boring, boring, boring. And this match sucks. This match sucks. They got, you know, it got to the point where Kurt Angle and so called Steve Austin had to kind of, you know, insert themselves uh, where they attacked Booker T. And, um, you know, sadly, it's kind of crazy, but um, you saw Buff Bagwell. This is kind of was his first and final match with WWF and slash WWE. He saw how WWE creative, how Vince McMahon and how cr- other creative officers within the company were going to treat these WCW superstars. And he didn't have it. He wasn't part of it. He thought it was stupid. He thought that they were just kind of, you know, setting themselves to fail, kind of put on the front lines of just being butchered by uh professional wrestling media by the fans and it just it just wasn't cool just wasn't cool one of the most awkward matches in the world of professional wrestling was on uh wwe monday night raw wcw holds a a championship match booker t defends his wcw world heavyweight championship against the you know buff bagwell it sucks because buff bagwell was really cool in wcw also so it was like you know booker t Booker T, the reason why he gets so much credit, the reason why he's one of, in my opinion, one of the best WWE wrestlers of all time. He's honestly, he's kind of, he's in my top 10. He's in my top 10 mostly because you saw a lot of WCW superstars did not want any part of the WWF at first, at first, like Goldberg. Goldberg saw it, he was like, oh, hell no. Yeah, Diamond Dallas Page, we saw like how WCW superstars were treating. He's like, you know what? Uh, hell no. But, you know, eventually he came and he was, you know, he was booked in a really awesome role where he was the stalker, the Undertaker's wife. Great glory. Great glory. Thank you, WWE. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. And, um, you know, thirdly, uh, also Sting. Sting saw the way WCW superstars were featured on WWF television. And he was like, nah, I don't want to be part of that. I'd rather be part of a growing company like TNA instead of like, just embarrass myself. This was one of the most embarrassing moments on WWF, and it was kind of at the expense of WCW, you know, the rising star of Buff Bagwell and their and their champion. On the final episode of Monday, uh, Monday Night Nitro, you saw Booker T defeat Scott Steiner. No, not Scott Steiner. No, I think it was DDP. Don't quote me on that. But um, you know, you saw him de- uh, winning the WCW World Heavyweight Championship, and the moment they came to WWE, it became an absolute joke, and it was it was crazy. Like I said, that's why I credit the Booker T being one of the best wrestlers, my top 10, because he kind of withstand all the BS with all the hazing, with all the bullying. And he made himself a champion. He be, eventually became the world heavyweight champion, grabbing that belt. He was King Booker. Now he's a Hall of Famer with the Harlem Heat. I think he was a two-time Hall of Famer. Now he does commentary with WWE NXT with Vic Joseph every Tuesday night on USA Network. So, you know, definitely got to credit Booker T. All right, so moving on. Now we're going to jump on in. No, that's not. Okay. 
Now we're going to jump on into 2002. WWE SmackDown takes place in Boston, Massachusetts. Edge teams up with the immortal Hulk Hogan and defeats Billy Gunn and Chuck Palumbo to win the WWE Tag Team titles. Something that I was not made aware of, something that kind of shocked me, was this was uh, Hulk Hogan's first ever uh, you know, winner from Tag Team titles. He won it with Edge, kind of like in one of those weird spots. But I guess it adds to his accolades. I guess it all works out. It's kind of, you know, I thought the Mega Powers won one. I had to Google it. And I was like, dude, no way. No way. Or, you know, or maybe when the NWO made it back to the WWE. Or when they debuted in the, the, in the WWE. But no, he never won a tag team title. His one and only WWE tag team title run is with the rated R superstar, the WWE Hall of Famer, Edge Adam Copeland. So I thought that was uh, you know, kind of interesting, kind of cool. Definitely, you know, you're pretty edgy, pretty badass. In 2007, Umaga defeats Santino Morella to win his second WWE, I think it was his second, his second WWE Intercontinental Championship in, uh, you know, Dallas, Texas. Umaga was Umaga. Umaga was an absolute beast. The reason why he does not have a lot of other accolades and accomplishments is this guy was kind of too, too dominant in what he did. Kind of like what you saw, you know, when The Fiend became, became the WWE uh, Universal Champion. Is that you kind of want to build on the idea that these guys are going to go undefeated. They're going to get killed. So the point where it gets too, like, you know, it gets too, kind of too choreographed, too scripted in the eyes of the WWE universe. Um, obviously, Umaga within, uh, you know, within himself is a legend. I, you know, I, you know, with is a legend, you know, kind of walking that fine line there. And I'm not trying to be mean, but um, I don't know. I just feel like Santino Morella, when he, def I think he defeated, no, he defeated. Defeated somebody with the help of Batista. I can't really, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna research that and check on it later. But you know, I remember when Santino Morella made it to the WWE, came in from the crowd. He uh didn't he beat didn't he break the la the the Lashley lock? I don't know. Could be crazy. Could be crazy. Umaga, one of the most dominant superstars in wrestling history, didn't lose much, but when he did, it was epic. But um, uh, yeah, uh, you know, 2007, you had Umaga winning the WWE Intercontinental Championship. All right, in 2017, day two of the New Japan Professional Wrestling's G1 in the United States. It was held in Long Beach, California. Uh, Kenny Omega defeated uh, Tamahiro uh, Ishii to become the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship, which is kind of crazy. I love the way Kenny Omega looks in that, you know, kind of that picture right there. Kind of sad to see, you know, it's kind of crazy because throughout the, you know, my professional wrestling, you know, kind of, you know, knowledge and stuff like that. I've been mostly a WWE fan. I can't lie. Cannot lie. Then you hear about these guys like the Young Bucks. You kind of hear Hangman Adam Page. You know, you hear uh, Cody Rhodes in the later years. You also hear Kenny Omega. And you're like, man, these guys are badass. And like now you kind of, I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to start watching AEW to watch Kenny Omega. Watch them for a little bit. Of, but of course, you know, injuries have to happen. I don't think he's going to be uh, fighting in the ring anytime soon for like six to seven months. Um, you know, could damn near be, be near uh, Christmas um, or next time AEW Dynasty next year. But I don't know. It's kind of crazy. You know, obviously love Kenny Omega. One of the most successful superstars in professional wrestling history. In 2017, you had the GFW Slammiversary um, 15 uh, held at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. You had D'Angelo Williams team out with Moose to defeat uh, Eli Drake and Chris O'Donis. In a strap match, you saw EC3 defeat James Storm. In a full mayhem match, you saw Eddie and Alicia Edwards defeat Davey Richards and Angelina Love. The GF Women's uh, Champion, Sienna, defeated the Knockouts Women's Champion, Rosemary, to unify the titles. The GFW Champion, World Heavyweight Champion, Alberto Del... Well, Alberto Del Rio. Alberto El Patron defeat uh, the Impact Champion Bobby Lashley to unify those cha those championships. Totally awesome. Definitely former WWE guys. The moment I found out these guys were gone, I was a little bummed out. Saw that they had success within TNA. Also, the, the GFW, the, you know, obviously, that, you know, once when, you know, TNA kind of went under, they kind of had to once again partner, them partner themselves up with another wrestling promotion. Ultimately worked out. You had these two guys that still have a lot of juice left in him. Bobby Lashley recently is injured, and he is off the WWE main roster. He's on the inactive slash injured list. But 
I want to see more from Bobby. I think Bobby Lashley has one more world title run left inside him right now. Obviously, the leader of the pride. He was the leader of the um, of the Hurt business, but that didn't really go as well. Kind of sucks. Felt bad for Cedric Alexander, Shelton Benjamin, and you know MVP and stuff like that. But you know, it is what it is. That's you know that's the wrestling game. Um, kind of sucks, but I want to see Bobby Lashley do more. I feel like Bobby Lashley deserves a lot. And imagine if you see Alberto El Patron debut on WWE NXT, the world would go absolutely nuts. It'd be pretty badass. It'd be pretty crazy. So, um, yeah, honestly, it should be, uh, you know, kind of interesting that uh, these two fought against each other on this day back in 2017. All right. And lastly, and lastly, 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 it's kind of crazy how that sounds like. Uh, back in 2020, the night two of the AEW Dynamite Fighter Fest uh, uh, at Daly's Palace in Jacksonville, Florida, you had Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page defeat Private Party to retain the AEW World Tag Team Championships. You had Lance Archer defeat Joe Janello. You also had The Butcher, The Blade, and The Lucha Brothers defeat FTR and The Young Bucks. And you had Cole Cabana and the Dark Order defeat um, defeat SoCal Uncensored, the team of Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, also uh, Scorpio Sky. And lastly, in the main event, you saw Chris Jericho defeat freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. So um, it's, you know, it's kind of crazy how you jump back into time, definitely jump back into the history, especially on this day of July 2nd. Uh, well, not of 2024, you know, just July 2nd, just in general. So, yeah. Well, guys, hope you guys enjoyed my show. I'm going to be back tomorrow, same exact time. So make sure you don't miss it. 8 p.m. Pacific time, 11 p.m. Eastern time. Always talking professional wrestling. Always digging into the digging into the tea and stuff like that. Definitely love seeing you guys. Every single one. Make sure you hit up the chat, the GSMC Sports Network. So, you know, be part of the show. You guys are a big part of the show. This show is nothing without you. So 1,010% sending my blessings to you guys. Hope you guys are having an amazing midweek. It is only Tuesday, and tomorrow is Wednesday. It's hump day. Don't think like that. I'm just getting hump day. We're getting over that hump, then you go down to Thursday and Friday. Fourth of July is happening on Thursday. I don't know if whoever has the Fourth of July off and the Fifth of July off. Lucky you. I do not have it off. I have to work. It sucks. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, that's just how it is. That's just how it is. So thank you so much for tuning into the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us. So please remember to Superman punch that like and subscribe button to the show. Also follow, um, also follow the network. Also follow the show and leave a positive review here at the GSMC Sports Network. We do love a lot of peace, love and positivity 1,010% all the way. Absolutely. And it really does make a difference, guys. We also invite you guys to follow us on Twitter slash X and uh, TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram for more content and updates. And if I haven't made you a wrestling fan by now, it's impossible. I'm just kidding. No, it's it's never impossible. Never give up. Uh, but anyways, we have my boy Nelson with basketball, basketball podcast, TJ and Jeremy with sports by the, you know, on the GSMC Sports Network. We have Garrison who does uh, golf Tuesday, Thursday, hockey Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We also have my boy Sam on baseball. I was actually a guest. I was an honored guest. I did such a good job talking about Shohei Otani and stuff like that. Football's right around the corner, guys. Football is right around the corner. If you are a diehard football fan, you need to watch this podcast. The GSMC Chip uh, Chip Shot Football Podcast with my boy Manny and the GSMC Football Podcast with my boy Kenny. We also have the Andrew Tate Show if you just want to, you know, dabble in the world of, of, of sports entertainment, also pop culture, also just, you know, entertainment industry all around. You know, make sure you check into that. We have Samantha with Women's Hoops and Heels uh, Sports Podcast, your one-stop shop for women's sports. Make sure you check that out. A thousand and ten percent. We'll have my boy Tommy talking about college football. College football also right around the corner, guys. Don't miss any of the action of your favorite sports here on the GSMC Podcasting Network, the GSMC Sports Network. Be a part of this GSMC Sports bloodline of passionate sports fans, willing and just so happy, pleasurable to give you guys all the cool facts, all the hot news, and, you know, basically stuff that you guys want to hear. It's not like Fox Sports. It's not like ESPN, where you have to charge absolutely free, 110%, so be a part of this GSMC Sports Bloodline. Well, guys, that's it for me. Hope you guys have an amazing Tuesday night. I'm going to go watch NXT. Can't wait to watch. It's going to be pretty awesome, man. Hey, stay beautiful.